Hello everyone and welcome back to our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the Data Cloud Summit. This is Dave Vellante and we're seeing the emergence of a next generation workload in the cloud where a more facile access and governed sharing of data is accelerating time to insights and action. All right, allow me to introduce our next guest. Amy Irwin is here. She's the Vice President of Strategy for Experience and Matt Glickman is VP Customer Product Strategy at Snowflake with an emphasis on financial services. Folks, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks, Thank you for having us. Nice to be here. Hey, so Amy, I mean, obviously 2020 has been pretty unique and crazy and challenging time for a lot of people. I, I, I don't know why, I, I've been checking my credit score a lot more for some reason on the app. I love the app. I, I, had, I, I got hacked, I had a lock it the other day. I locked my credit, somebody tried to do a, and, I, and it worked. I was so happy, so thank you for that. But so we know Experian, but there's a ton of data behind what you do. I wonder if you could share kind of where you sit in the data space and how you've seen organizations leverage data up to this point. And really, if you could address maybe some of the changes that you're seeing as a result of the pandemic, that would be great. Sure, sure. Uh, well, as you mentioned, Experian uh, is best known as, as a credit bureau. Uh, I work in our marketing services uh, business unit. And uh, what we do is we really help brands leverage the power of data and technology to make the right marketing decisions and better understand and connect with consumers. Um, so we offer marketers products around data, identity, activation, measurement. Uh, we have a consumer view data file that's based on offline PII and contains demographic interest transaction data and other attributes on about 300 million people in the US. Uh, and on the identity side, we've always been known for our safe haven or privacy friendly matching that allows marketers to connect their first party data to Experian or other third parties. Uh, but in today's world with the growth and importance of digital advertising and consumer behavior shifting to digital, uh, Experian also is working to connect that offline data to the digital world for a complete view of the customer. You mentioned COVID. Um, we actually, we serve many different verticals and um, what we're seeing from our clients during COVID is that um, th there's a varying impact of the pandemic. Uh, the common theme is that those of it that have successfully pivoted their businesses to digital are doing much better. Uh, as we all know, COVID accelerated very strong trends to digital, both in e-commerce and in media viewing habits. Uh, we work with a lot of retailers. Retail is a tale of two cities with big box and grocery growing and apparel retail really struggling. We've helped our clients leveraging our data to better understand the shifts in these consumer behaviors and better segment their customers during this really challenging time. Uh, so think about there's, there's a group of customers that is still staying home, that is sheltered in place. There's a group of customers that's starting that, that significantly varied their consumer behavior, but is starting to venture out a little. And then there's a group of customers that's doing largely what they did before in a somewhat modified fashion. So we're helping our clients segment those customers into groups uh, to try and understand the right messaging and right offers for each of those groups. And we're also helping them with at-risk audiences. Um, so that's more on the financial side. Which of your customers are really struggling due to the pandemic? And how do you respond? So that's awesome, thank you. Uh, and, and you know, it's, it's funny, I mean, somebody, I saw a Twitter poll today asking if we measure our screen time. And I said, oh my, no. Uh, so Matt, let me ask you, you spend a ton of time in financial services. You really kind of cut your teeth there. And it's always been very data oriented. You've seen a lot of changes. Tell us about how your customers are, are bringing together data, the skills, the people, obviously a big part of the equation and, and applications to really put data at the center of their universe. What's new and different that these companies are getting out of the, the investments in data and skills? Right, and that's a great question. Um, the acceleration that Amy mentioned <clears throat> is real. Um, we're seeing it particularly this year, but I think even in the past few years, the reluctance of customers to embrace uh, the cloud is behind us. And now there's this massive acceleration to be able to go faster. Um, and in some ways, the new entrants into this category have an advantage um, versus the, you know, the, the companies that have been in this space, whether it's financial services or beyond. Um, and in, in a lot of ways, they all are, are seeing the cloud and services like Snowflake as a way to, to not only catch up, but leapfrog your competitors 
and really deliver a differentiated experience to your customers, to your business internally or externally. Um, and this past, you know, however long this crisis has been going on um, has really only accelerated that because now there's a new demand to understand your customer better, your, your business better with, with your traditional data sources and also new alternative data sources. Um, and also being able to take a pulse. One of the things that we learned, uh, which was a, you know, an eye-opening experience was as the crisis unfolded, one of our data partners decided to take the data sets about where the cases were, were happening from the Johns Hopkins and World Health Organization and put that on our platform. And it became a runaway hit. We're now with thousands of our customers overnight, we're using this data to understand how their business was doing versus how the crisis was unfolding in real time. Um, and this has been a game changer. And I think it's only, op it's only scratching the surface of what now the world will be able to do when data is really at their fingertips and you're not hindered by your legacy platforms. I, I wrote about that back in the early days of the pandemic when you guys did that and talked about some of the changes that you guys enabled. And, and you know, you're right about, about cloud. I mean, financial services, cloud used to be an evil word and now it's almost, you know, it's become a mandate. Amy, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about what, what you know, your customers are having to work through in order to achieve some of these outcomes. I mean, you know, I'm interested in the starting point. I've been talking a lot and writing a lot and, and, and talking to practitioners about what I call the data life cycle. Sometimes people call it the data pipeline. It's, it's a complicated matter, but those customers and companies that can put data at the center and really treat that pipeline as you know, the heart of their organization, if you will, are, are really succeeding. What are you seeing and what really is the starting point there? Yes, yes, that's a good question. And as you mentioned, first party, um, I mean, we start with first party data, right? First party data is critical to understanding consumers. Um, and in, in, in different verticals, different uh, companies, different brands have varying levels of first party data. So retailers can have a lot more first party data financial services company than say an auto manufacturer. Uh, and while many marketers have that first party data to really have a 360 view of the customer, they need third party data as well. And that's where Experian comes in. We help brands connect those disparate data sets, both first and third party data to better understand consumers and create a single customer view, which has a number of applications. Um, I think the last stat I heard was that uh, there's about eight devices on average per person. Um, I always joke that we're going to have these enormous, I mean, and that number is growing. We're going to have these enormous charging stations in our house. And I think we are all the different devices. And we, we seamlessly move from device to device along our customer journey. And um, if the brand doesn't understand who we are, it's much harder for the brand to connect with consumers and create a positive uh, customer experience. And we, we, we cite that about 95% of companies are actually, they are looking to achieve that single customer view. They recognize um, that, that they need that. And they've aligned various teams from e-commerce to marketing to sales to at a minimum ingest their first party data and then connect that data to better understand uh, consumers. So, you know, consumers can interact with a brand through a website, a mobile app, in-store visits, um, you know, by the phone, TV ads, et cetera. And a brand needs to use all of those touch points um, often collected by different parts of the organization and then add in that third party data to really understand the consumers. In terms of specific use cases, um, there's, there's, there's about three that come to mind. So there's first, there's relevant advertising and reaching the right customer. There's measurement. Um, so being able to evaluate uh, your advertising efforts. Uh, if you see an ad on, if I see an ad on my mobile and then I buy by visiting a desktop website, understanding, or I get a direct mail piece, understanding that those connect, those interactions are all connected to the same person is critical for measurement. And then there's, uh, there's personalization, um, which includes improved customer experience amongst your own um, touch points with that consumer, personalized marketing communication, and then of course, um, analytics. So those are the use cases we're seeing. Great, thank you, Amy. And, and now Matt, you can't really talk about data without talking about you know, governance and, and, and compliance. And I remember back in you know, 2006, when the federal rules of civil procedure went in, it was easy, the lawyers just said, no, nobody can have access, but that's changed. And one of the things I like about what Snowflake's doing with the data cloud is it's really about democratizing access, but doing so in a way 
that gives people confidence that they only have access to the right data. So maybe you could talk a little bit about how you're thinking about this topic, what you're doing to help customers navigate, which has traditionally been such a really challenging problem. No, it's a, another great question. Um, this is where I think the major disruption is happening. Um, and what Amy described, being able to join together first and third party data sets, um, being able to do this was always a challenge because data had to be moved around. I had to ship my first party data to the other side. The third party data had to be shipped to me and being able to join those data sets together um, was problematic at best. And now with the focus on privacy and protecting PII, um, this, is, this is something that has to change. And the good news is with the data cloud, data does not have to move. Data can stay where it belongs. Experience can keep its data. It's experience customers can hold onto their data. Yet the data can be joined together on this universal global platform that we call the data cloud. On top of that, and particularly with the regulations that are coming out that are gonna prevent data from being collected on either a mobile device or, in, or in, as cookies and web browsers, new approaches, and we're seeing this a lot in, in our space, both in financials and in media, is to set up these data clean rooms where both sides can give access to one another, but not have to reveal any PII to do that join. Um, this is gonna be huge. Right now, you actually can protect your, your customers' private and your consumers' private identities, but still accomplish that join that Amy mentioned to be able to, 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 a, to, a, to a relate the cause and effect uh, of these campaigns and really understand the signals um, that these data sets are trying to say about one another. Again, without having to move data, without having to reveal PII, we're seeing this happening now. This is this is the next big thing um, that we're, we're going to see ex, you know, explode over the next months and years to come. I totally agree. Massive change is coming in public policy in this area. And I wonder, we only have a few minutes left. I wonder if, if for our audience members that are you know, looking for some advice, what, what's the, Amy, what's the one thing you'd recommend they start doing differently or consider putting in place that's going to set them up for success over the next decade? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think um, I always say, you know, first harness all of your first party data across all touch points. Um, get that first party data in one place and working together. Second, connect that data with trusted third parties and, and, and Matt suggested some ways to do that. And then third, always put the customer first. Speak their language uh, where and when they want to be uh, reached out to uh, and, and use the information you have to really create a better uh, a better customer experience for, for your customers. Matt, what would you add to that? Bring us home if you would. Applications. Um, the idea that data can now be, your data can now be pulled into your own business applications the same way that Netflix and Spotify are pulled into your consumer and lifestyle applications. Um, again, without data moving, these personalized applications experiences is what I encourage everyone to be thinking about from first principles. What would you do in your next app that you're going to build if you had all of your consumers, if the consumers had access to their data in the app and not having to think about things, you know, from scratch, leverage the data cloud, leverage these, you know, service providers like Experian and build the applications up tomorrow. I'm super excited to, when I talk to practitioners like yourselves about the future of data. Guys, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It was really a pleasure having you and hope we can continue this conversation in the future. Thank you. Thanks, sir. All right, and thank you for watching. Keep it right there. We've got great content, tons of content coming at the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. Keep it right there.